Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. So I have to admit, I have a little bit of a problem. I have a problem with leather. I love it. I use it on everything, as you've seen in lots of my videos. <laughs> So I've created this really interesting little bracelet. I've taken a couple different uh, techniques and combined them and come up with something that I think is pretty darn fun. So if you want to see what I've made, come and join me and let's have some fun with leather. All right, so to make this beautiful leather bracelet, I have 24 inches of 1.5 millimeter leather. I have two meters of three ply Irish wax linen. I have a button and a charm, a jump ring, a barrel knot tube and a bale. And I'll use a little bit of GS Hypo cement. I also have three different colors of size eight aught uh, Mayuki seed. These are a new matte opaque color that just came out and I just love this color combination together. I'm also gonna be using a bead board with a bull nose clip and a little bit of painter's tape. So I'm gonna show you how to put this all together. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leather and I'm going to place it through my button end and I'm gonna pull that down. And now I'm gonna offset this a little bit. So really the only amount that you need for um, on one side is basically the size of your wrist. So I'm just gonna grab a ruler here and I'm gonna pull about maybe eight inches, eight or nine inches. I wanna have a little um, more than a little less because you know you can't really make this any bigger. So I'm gonna go for about eight inches. Okay, so now I always turn the side that I'm going to wrap with on the top. So I've got my little shorter piece on the bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna place my tube inside the pieces of leather and I'm gonna work with the long one on the top and I'm gonna pull that around and go around once, twice, three times, always working towards my left hand. Take the end of the leather, put it through there, and pull down. And I can remove my tube, and then tighten that up. Now I don't want to have that so far away, and I don't want to have it right tight, so I just sort of have to jockey it in, into position a little bit, and then I'm going to tighten it up. So I just keep sort of pulling until I get it where I want, and then give it a little bit of a tighten. There we go. So I just want to make sure that I still have my original eight inches and it looks like it. And then give that a good tighten up. Okay, so now I need to sort of set this to make it a little bit easier to work on. So, and I have two different lengths, so it does make it a little bit tougher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one end and pull it through the back end of my bull nose clip. I'm just gonna pull this forward to make sure that you can see it and then take the shorter end. What I wanna do is have it so that my button is pulling on that way, so I've got something to work with. Now, traditionally, when you're doing macrame, um, you can use a macrame board um, and then sort of pin this down, but I haven't really been able to figure out a way of pinning this down. So all I do is I take a piece of painter's tape. Now, you wanna make sure you use painter's tape and not regular masking tape, because this will strip the color off. And you don't really need it tight except at the beginning. So I just sort of flip it like this and just kind of add a little bit of tape on there. Now it's not really gonna stick a lot and that's fine. We just need something to sort of stop it from moving around a lot at the very beginning. So um, you'll see now that it's kind of tight but I don't worry about it after it starts to come loose. I might sort of tighten it up here and there as I go along but I don't worry about it too much. It's just to get it started. So now I'm gonna take my Iris wax linen, and I'm going to find the center point of that. So I'm just gonna do that off camera because it's a long piece and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my center point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that underneath and I'm gonna pull one side out. It just takes a second to sort of get it sort of organized. And we're just gonna do simple macrame. So I like to use sort of like my P's and Q's. So the first one I'm gonna take and I'm gonna do like a little bit of a P over top of the right hand side. You can see there what looks like a P. And then I'm gonna take that tail and go over top of the, that one. So you always wanna go over top of the tail on this side of the leather. I now need to get this piece up inside that loop. So I just take it and pull it up inside that loop. It looks like a bit of a mishmash because it's Irish wax linen and it's very sticky. So you just wanna keep holding on up here when you're pulling so that it doesn't um, offset. You wanna keep it the length that we started off with. 
Okay, so now I've got my little loop. I'm gonna push it right underneath there and pull it tight. So now there's a little bump on that side, so I know that I have to then start the other side of my piece. So now it's gonna be easier to show you because I don't have all that to hold on to. So now I'm gonna do my Q, it kinda looks like a backwards P. So I take that, bring that over top of that tail and up inside there. Pull it through and then tighten it up. Give that a nice good tight there. Just wanna make sure you guys can see. I'm trying to see on camera if I can see too. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do my P, go over top of that tail and make sure you stay on this side of the leather and then go underneath. Sometimes when people are doing this, they'll go on the wrong side of the leather and then they have problems. So now I'm gonna complete this square knot by doing the Q, go over that tail and up through that little hole. So we're gonna start off by doing two full square knots. There we go, so that's how we get started. So I've got my barrel knot and two full square knots. So now I'm just gonna lay out my seed beads and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my seed beads off to the side here. You could put them in little trays or something to make life easier, but you know, I never think about doing that before I start. And then when I start doing the video, I'm like, oh, that would have been easier. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm gonna take one of my eights and I'm gonna pop it on one side of my Irish wax linen and bring it all the way down to the end. And you can do these in any directional you know, way you want. Like you, can, you don't have to do the pattern that I'm doing, but I um, played around with a few different patterns and I think this one looks actually pretty cute. Okay, so I'm gonna bring both of these up here and then I'm going to do my first part of my square knot. So you can see I don't take a lot of time to do it. I just sort of do it in my hand. And I wanna make sure that these are going kind of straight and then I'm gonna do the other side. So one side has got beads in it and the other side of the square knot does not have beads in it. So I'm not doing an extra in between, just a full square knot in between. So then I'm gonna put on another of the same color. Pull that down. Now I do have one to swap out in a bit to show you how to complete this bracelet because it does take a little bit of time. Macrame is not something that you can just sort of, you know, throw together really fast. So I made one at home last night because I was experimenting with other colors too. So you'll get to see another color. So, okay, so I'm starting with my P, go over top, pull up through the hole, and then tighten that up. And I just sort of pull these down so that they're straightened nice and tight, and then I do my Q. So over top, like that, and then pull up through the hole. Now the reason that I'm using the Irish wax linen is because it has some, I like to use the word gription. <laughs> I know it's probably not even a word, but it has that sort of grip that we want. I get tons of comments, people asking, can I use this and can I use that for certain things? And I always say, you know what, I don't know, give it a try. Um, you could probably do this with Eslon. It may not have that same kind of taut feel to it. So um, n I never say never, like, you know, if, if, try it. If it works for you, then that's great. I just choose the materials I choose because I think they're gonna work the best, but that doesn't mean that they're hard and fast and that you can't try something else. If you're a vegan, then um, find some uh, vegan cord, some sort of a cotton cord. Um, I know some companies are coming out with sort of a, a vegan leather and we're trying to source one out right now, but um, the only thing they've managed to come up with that I like is, um, see this one's not cooperating, so I'm just gonna pull it down there. There we go. Um, is a, a braided one and I don't want a braided leather look. I just want um, a round one. So we are constantly trying to uh, find different things to keep you guys happy. Um, so, so far no luck with a uh, vegan cord, but if you can find something in where you're from and you like vegan cords, then go ahead and use them. You know, don't, um, just because I use something doesn't mean you have to use it. I do these videos to uh, sort of, you know, get your design inspiration, uh, you know, give it a little bit of a shake up because people get in a rut. So, but that doesn't mean you have to do exactly what I do. Okay, so you can see now that I've changed to a new color. I'm just doing groups of three. So I make sure in between each one, I'm doing my second half of my square knot. So I just pull that down so that they're sitting the way I want to. 
So I'll just do a few more. I'll finish my um, groups of three and then I will swap it out and show you how to finish it because there's just no need for you to sit here and watch me do this for, you know, an hour or so. I think that's what it took me last night to get, get mine done was about an hour. Just enough to watch the end of a movie that I've watched quite a few times. <laughs> It was a Liam Neeson movie. I, I enjoy him. Okay. Just get those kind of tightened up there. So I think you get the concept how you can see once you get going, you can just kind of easily pull those through with your hands. One of my favorite things to do is to come up with color combos. And I will show you one at the end and the way that I came up with that color combo was I happened to be watching a design show the other night and the host was doing the uh, color combination in um, she wanted like colors of the of the ocean so she chose turquoise and coral and sort of a creamy white and I just loved it I thought oh my gosh that is such a pretty color co combination um, and it instantly I don't go to decorating I go to beads and I gr came in grabbed the colors and threw together this bracelet I had been thinking about making a bracelet something like this for a while But wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it I had the concept in my head, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it and it was that color combination that sparked how I was going to um, design this bracelet so it's funny how we come up with our uh, designs um, maybe you know I've often been um, inspired by things that are you know like strange things like I'm, I've looked at fabrics and gone oh I love the colors on those fabrics and pulled out maybe two or three colors to, to come up with a combo for design so use inspiration from wherever you can find it you never know um, one of my I think I might have told this story before but one of my favorite color combinations from probably about 15 years ago because she was still on TV was from Oprah Winfrey and it had nothing to do with jewelry she just happened to walk out when this beautiful dusty rose and um, brown jumpsuit and it was just you know I didn't even really in enjoy the jumpsuit that much I loved the color combination and against her skin tone it looked fabulous and I went oh my gosh that would be the most beautiful color combination to work with so I literally ran downstairs to my workshop and I found some dusty rose pearls that I had and some smoky quartz because I love smoky quartz and I put together a piece and fell in love with it and I designed a whole line that year because I back then I used to have lines when I had my jewelry business and I did a whole line in dusty rose and smoky quartz and it was one of my most popular lines and simply inspired by a color combination that Oprah was wearing so you never know where it comes from right all right so now I'm on my last one of my groupings of three and I think this color combo is super fun something a little unusual and you know that was that's the one nice thing about jewelry I tend to wear very um, basic tones you'll see on my videos when I do my intros I wear a lot of black and black and black and gray and gray and black <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I really don't enjoy show <laughs> shopping for clothes it's not my thing at all and I always have a sweater on because I run from hot to cold so <laughs> so what I like to do because I dress so boring <laughs> is I like to um, put pops of color so you do not absolutely do not have to match your jewelry to your clothing that is such an old wives tale where you have, oh, well, if I'm wearing black, then I must wear black jewelry. Heck no, that's the time when you pop a really pretty piece like this and, and make it shine. So um, have some fun with your jewelry. Make it have a pop of color. Um, a bright pair of earrings and a pretty little bracelet, that's the best way to go. So now you can see that I have finished my first section of my color combination, and now I'm starting on my on my second one so I just wanted to show you how I started this so I'm now going to swap it out and show you how to finish off the bracelet so I'll explain how I did that so there you go so there's our beautiful color combination and I'm loving how that one looks so I'll be right back
Okay, so I have the one that I was working on last night, and these are three different colors of Picasso. And this is the Picasso sort of um, seafoam, and then the tan, and then the blue. And that one, I think, is one of my favorites. I guess I like all of them, but I really love how this looks with just that color combinations of three different colors done in threes. You know, threes are always pleasing to the eye. So the way that I figured it out was the embellishment that I'm going to add adds just over an inch and a bit on there. So I went about an inch less than my wrist size. So that's how I figured out how long to go. So when I finish, I've got my last one finished here. So now you can see I only have just a little tiny bit of um, my leather left there. So I finished on three. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to, I started off with two and now I'm going to end with two. So I can just do this right in my hand. You don't even need to have it on a board. So I'm just going to finish up my last two square knots. So I make sure that these ones are nice and snug. It's a simple bracelet, but I think with some of the embellishments, it's really cute. So now we've finished with two, so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to tie a couple knots in the back side of it. So this will grip really snug because of the wax in there. So pull that nice and tight. And now my next one, I'm gonna do a surgeon's knot. So I just do a regular knot and then you pull it back through one more time. And with a surgeon's knot, it works best to sort of pull it apart so that it doesn't all bunch up on you in the wrong place like this one's wanting to do. So I kind of will give it a quick pull and then it, it'll go right where I want it to. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a pair of cutters and trim that off and trim that side off. Now this will have a little, it sort of sticks out and it, it's almost a little bumpy. So what I sometimes like to do is take a pair of pliers and just sort of flatten that out a little bit and it sort of softens that end. Now I will take a little bit of glue and put some glue on there uh, just to hold that knot, but I'm not gonna do it on camera because then it makes a big mess on everything so and I can't continue the video. So uh, definitely put a little dab of GS Hypo glue right there. Okay, so now we're gonna continue with our embellishment. So I am going to um, turn this over because I wanna have the nicer side of the um, barrel knots facing the other direction. So I'm gonna have my long piece on the top and I'm gonna come in between and do three wraps working towards my left hand. Going through the back, pull that out making sure to always keep control of that knot. Now, one of the ways that you can soften this up a little bit is by taking this knot and placing it right on top of that last little bit there. And by the nicer side, like this has a definite, to me, the barrel knots have a front and a back, and this is the nicer side. So I turn it over when I want the, one, the three, you know, I've got three here. It definitely looks more like three here and sort of two and a half there. So if you want the three to show on top, then just turn it over and you'll get that um, just like that. Okay, so now I am going to take my bail and place that on there. And now I'm gonna do the same again. So I'm going to do an, an, an additional barrel knot here. So go around once, twice, three times. And I'm going to put that through the end. And then I need to move that right up on the other side of the bale. There we go. Just take my time, jockey it around into position. And then just tighten that up. Okay, so now I need to use my button as a little bit of measuring tool so I know that I need to have my next knot somewhere around here. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take my tube and place it in between the two pieces of leather, wrap around once, twice, three times, always making sure to go towards my left hand, going through the back side. 
And if you purchase these kits, it will come with the tube. So you'll have a tube to be able to make your own piece. Now I want to make it about right here. So what I do is I take my thumb and I place it right where I want it and it stops the knot from moving someplace that I don't want. So just before I tighten it up, I usually just come back and make sure that my button's gonna fit and that's perfect. So then I can come back in and give it some really good pulls. There we go, get that nice and snug. And I really tug on that because I don't want this knot to come apart. So now I'm gonna come in and trim it off. You could put a little embellishment, you could maybe tie these off and do something kind of fun with it, but you don't have very much here, so I just trim it. So I'm just gonna trim one there and one there, and then we're just gonna add the rest of the embellishments. Okay, so now I just have to add my little charm. So I have a nice heavy jump ring here. So I'm gonna place my tools on either side and open up this way, make sure you never go that way, it'll break the neck. Run that through the end of the charm and through your bail and then do it up nice and tight. Give it a little jiggle until it's nice and snug. All right, so we wanna make sure that we do add some GS Hypo glue on the end of this knot. It's really important because this knot can come out. So I'm just gonna put a little blob there. Now it does dry clear so you don't see it. Um, and then I'm gonna put a little blob there. And I'm also gonna turn this over and go right in there on that end just to make sure that one's not going anywhere. And just let it set up um, and it will add that little bit of extra reinforcement that this bracelet needs. Okay, so here you go. Here's our completed pieces. You can see that this just adds a nice little embellishment on there. Um, this is the other co color combination that I found on by watching that show the other day. Look at how fun that is. I've used the um, antique gray, which is kind of a beachy gray color, and I've mixed it with the um, three different colors, the turquoise, the coral, and the sort of off-white. I love that one. And then I've got the one that I was just working on, which was the three different colors of Picasso. And then the one that I was showing in the uh, beginning of the video, which was the um, matte opaque, sort of a, you know, a corally pumpkin kind of color, and the ochre and the navy blue. So these will all be available in kit form. You'll be able to pick out your metal colors and your leather colors and whichever seed bead combinations you want. So I really love this one. I think it's a really cute little stacking bracelet. You could make it into um, a wrap bracelet if you wanted. If you wanted to go around a couple times, you would just have to double the size of everything. But I think this one would be a really fun little wrap too. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and press that little bell that's next to the subscribe button and that will give you a notification of when I go live. And I wanna thank everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to leave me a comment and say hi and we will see you on the next one.